Okay. And we are officially live. I already regret this. <sighs> Should we give people a few minutes to filter in, or are we just going to say fuck it? If also, if any of you guys want to join, the Twitch link is in the announcements channel. Nobody is watching. Oh, now four people are watching. <laughs> it went from nobody is watching to four. Uh, and now there's five, so it can't be us. Luckily, we don't have to take a tea break because I still have tea left in my mug from work. A call to adventure? <laughs> Holy fuck, people are streaming in quickly. This is... So, some background on what the fuck we're doing right now because... Seriously, I think people are gonna need it. Sean's an idiot who, in the behind-the-screen chat of my Discord server, decided to post a suggestion for a bunch of um, regular GMs to join together for a fully improvised session. He has absolutely zero idea where this is going to go, and he's the person running it. He wants to show... All right, so let's begin with uh, what everyone's characters are. Clockwise order on the internet. Uh, right. <laughs> Fucking clockwise around the globe. Uh, okay. So, uh, my character is Jedediah Goodfellow, the doomsday, the fantasy doomsday prepper ranger. <laughs> he is a human. Is he is... <sighs> Hold on. It's off to a good start already getting yelled at for talking too loud. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm playing uh, Jedediah Goodfellow. He is a um, fairly scrawny human guy with wild eyes, covered head to toe in camouflage with a hood over his head. 
and he is just the image of a ridiculous doomsday prepper, except with a bow instead of a gun. I believe that takes us to, to uh, Marcus. My only question is, is that your American accent? I love it. Ah, uh, I should do my southern accent for Jedediah. Seems about appropriate. Then again, it'll probably uh, result in Sean killing both of us. Uh, there, um, there are so many long pauses at the moment because, uh, um, hold on, um, would, would one of you talk for a moment? Because I'm not sure. Uh, okay, that's why. Uh, nobody has heard anything that anyone other than me has said because my stupid fuck, because OBS decided to be fucking stupid. And I've been hearing what party bots using the, I'm uh, the stream that is. Oh, you mean the stream? <laughs> yes, because OBS decided to default to instead of um. Instead of using my um. My DAC amp to broadcast sound, it was trying to use the headphone jack built into my microphone to broadcast sound which I don't use and is not the default device on my computer and no sound is broadcast through oh beautiful the train wreck <laughs> so real the train wreck fucking begins um I'm sorry to the 10 people who were here for the audio <laughs> issues uh welcome to the worry, four people 14, who weren't though. No, don't worry, it's 14. It's going up even higher. It's great. I love it. Can they hear me now? As I Yes, they should be able to hear you now. People can hear Sean okay. now, correct? No, no. Chat, chat. I want to see some fucking I can hear you, Mr. Bones. Sean, October is over. We need to leave the skeleton war in the past. I can't. It's too deep inside me. It <laughs> runs through my veins. It runs below my veins. It, it's down to the bone. Oh, thank hey. God. They can hear me. Can oh. you hear the other ones? People, start talking. Make noise. If testing, can... testing. One, two, three. I was walking down the street, saw somebody steal a bunch of tomatoes. I couldn't, I couldn't, get, I couldn't catch up. God damn it. Yeah, I'm As not even tell, all of this The puns have begun. Okay, to Toscan, wait, no, I'm sorry, on. but this... it's not just so, skeletons so... you hear. No, hold on. Allow me to re-explain the entire premise, because now I do, <laughs> which is great, because I'm still working, unfortunately. Okay, so basically saying what we're going to be doing is this is a bet that I have going with no one. I said at the start, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to improvise a session from square fucking one, like square one. And now, we're all going to put this together, and we're all going to run it to see what in the hell happens. As you can already tell based on this start, it is so improvised that I gave everyone 60 minutes to prep. They've had 60 minutes to prep. This is our 10 minutes introduction, just to make sure that we have all of our shit straight. And frankly, in five minutes, we're diving in regardless whether or not I'm ready. I'm going to literally ask so many questions at the start. It's going to feel like I'm doing an interview, but great news. That's just how we're doing this. Other than that, this will be entirely improvised. How the fuck it's going to go? I don't know whether or not they're going to fucking succeed. And frankly, whatever the fuck I throw at these people will be a determining factor solely based on whether or not I give a shit. I'm going to be browsing through the... 
uh, Twitch chat too. So if you guys have any suggestions, uh, fuck. If you have any suggestions on what to throw at them, and I think that they're really good or funny, I will take it and I will use it to my fullest advantage. I'm also going to be taking notes during this just to prove that nothing more than improv and notes is all you really need to get going. So yeah, fucking go on away. I'm going to be watching you guys and I'm going to be watching this giant like monsters list and we're going to be throwing these guys into hell. So yeah, everyone right? Everyone set? You have four minutes to just explain your characters. I'll give you a minute each. Okay. We're starting, once again, with Cloak. You have 60 seconds. Okay, Go. so I already went through mine before and people actually heard it. Uh, I am I am Jedediah Goodfellow. I am a uh, neutral, true neutral, doomsday prepper ranger. I'm a fairly scrawny guy with wild eyes, covered head to toe in camouflage with a hood over my head to protect my identity from the government. And I'm, I'm here with my uh, pet capybara to uh, make our way through uh, the impending apocalypse that may or may not actually happen and nobody else nobody else believes it'll happen. Because no, nobody else okay. is as tuned okay, in as done. me. Next, we're starting with you, Marcus. Go. 60 seconds. Uh, my name is uh, Ray Smash. I'm here to protect the border edges of the world from the lawless and the, the uncouth. I'm here with a, a wand on my hip, and I'm bring justice. I got myself a nice wire-brimmed hat. Got a got a pair of heels with them little spinny shop things on them. And uh, <laughs> God, God, the accent's getting worse every second. Uh, and and I got myself a big old duster jacket. Oh, Ain't much else to say. I should have made a character from up north, as in got, British up okay. north. You've got 20 Perfect. more seconds. Go. Yeah. Hello, Shit. I'm comrades, Comrade G Gusta. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. Oh, uh, we're all doing horrible accents explicitly to make Sean miserable. <laughs> I should have done the horrible, uh, a horrible British accent, so we would have had a Brit doing a horrible American accent and, a, and an American doing a horrible British accent. I mean, See, I'm, I'm I am Texan. perfectly entitled to do a rocks fall at any point. This can literally be a 20 minute stream if you want to fucking test it. <laughs> so the irony of this is that I can do a semi decent Russian accent. But I chose American. I think the two of us can do reasonably decent Russian accents. Although Sean would okay. probably argue with us because he interacts with actual Russians. Why is it Fuck, that, that was I the worst attempt I've ever done at a Russian accent. I can literally speak the language and you disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you awesome. want me to do a Canadian character, eh? Okay, that that viewer gets banned from anything. Any suggestions from insert name over here, I will now ignore. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going. All right, so we have 15 seconds before we start. Is everyone ready? Yes. My body is ready. Don't know. Wow, sure oh, I am. just noticed there was a single held message, and it is so poorly spelt. That I'm not going to allow it because it got caught by Twitch's filters, but I'm definitely going to show it to the group later so we can laugh at the spelling. Okay, so basically, I'm going to ask one question to you guys right at the start, and this will be very important. Green, red, or black? Red. Green. Black. Fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Calculated. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to pick one each. Doing magenta because fuck you. All right, everyone ready? We're doing magenta for this. Okay. All right, so. Uh. 
You guys begin your adventure arriving at a land as Quimbleton. Quimbleton is a very agrarian society. You know, there's lots of agriculture that goes on. It's become a very primary resource for food, farming, and just general growth within the region. I've already forgotten what it is called, by the way. I think you called it Stimbleton? But I may be thinking of Stimblethorpe? Quimbleton. Quimbleton. I was thinking of Stimblethorpe. I wonder if that's going to happen. It's called Quimbleton. (laughs) And Quimbleton is... It's sort of like... It's kind of a city-state in a way, shape, or form. You're on a European-esque land. There's lots of trees. There's lots of mountains and hills. But otherwise, it's fairly green and beautiful, you know? Concepts of, like, the frozen cold of the place known officially as Creighton. And the deserty, tundra-like... Well, the deserty, uh, dry, sand duny areas known as Hazak are completely foreign to the people of Quimbleton, who are nations such as Tark and uh, Quagley. Yes, Quagley. But the, the real beauty of this situation is just the natural state of Quimbleton, this calm farm boy's paradise of a way where the sun is always rising and setting at the perfect times. You know, the hum of locusts can be heard. Well, not locusts, but casetas. The hum of casetas can be heard in the summer. Cicadas. Whatever. The hum of insects, which bury themselves underground for decades, can be heard. (laughs) Uh, The trees grow mighty fine and tall, and the falls are short but pretty, the springs are brief, the winters are not long, or at least they're enough, they're sufficient to provide you enough time to recover your grounds. But all of you are travelers within this region. It's a very foreign place to you. You come from various parts of this uh, continent. And the reason you all are here is because, well, frankly, circumstance. Pure circumstance, plain and simple. You've all been called here for various reasons, and I would like you to explain your pure reason for coming to this very small, peaceful farm or region right now. We will start in order. I'm going to write this down so this will become important. However, just keep in mind, you've come here for peaceful reasons. That is the only contrary. Okay, go. Well, when the shit hits the fan, I can uh, easily find some place out of the way in an agrarian society to uh, disappear. Next. I come here just to keep the peace. Nothing more. Next. Unit, what brings your character to these humble and relaxing lands? Do not try to scrounge the Russian accent if you don't think you can do it. Okay, um... <laughs> I went to do it so badly, but I can't. It uh, takes practice. Try. Learn to roll your R's. Yeah, okay. it's really important. Really important. <laughs> I can tell. Really anyway, uh, I've come here to... Accurate. To get intel of the general how the country is, like how their cities look and how de- how heavily defended it. Yep. So we have a guy who wants keeping peace, presumably a lawman. So I'm gonna pretend like you work with the local sheriffs, Marcus. And we have a guy gathering intel. So you're from a foreign power who's most likely looking into this place. Yes. I wouldn't say it- for war purposes, but like. You know, just the general keeping peace. Most likely a unit that's working in the background. No, a yeah. union working in the background. That's it. My character developed a proper accent for this place that yeah, to so blend have... in with the locals better. <laughs> he developed a proper accent. <laughs> Alright. But regardless, 
nonetheless, you three are discussing in the local town square as to, well, Marcus, uh, I believe this crazy ass conspiracy theorist has come here wanting to discuss with you and, you know, the local uh, researcher from a foreign land who's come here to just sort of chat and get the vibe of things. When this crazy conspiracy theorist dude kind of prattles up and he wants to just sort of set up a place to live and settle down in the future. You know, when end times have finally arrived. So, uh, the end times are upon us. So just start a little dialogue going and uh, yeah, I'll bring up something when you guys are ready. Okay, get going. Right, so uh, I I hear that uh, this place is fairly uh, peaceful, right? I should hope so. Well, uh, well, I've just got to ask you, um, how prepared is this place for when the shit really hits the fan? When uh, when the uh, four horsemen start riding their way across the horizon and uh, the apocalypse is upon us. Now, boy, you are speaking crazy talk here. All I know is ain't no criminals gonna be stealing nothing or causing a ruckus while I was about. Ah, right, right. You uh, gotta keep the peace. Can't admit that uh, the, the, were, the end times are upon us. Boy, what be this shit you're talking about? With the fall horseman. Well, I can tell. Well, it's smartly know, defended. From, uh, as, for, as the as the old books as the old books say, uh, when the when the uh, world is coming to an end, the four horsemen will ride across the ride across the plains and reap the souls of a living. I mean, my holy book doesn't say that. And I'm prepared to be down several hundred feet underground and far away from them. Far away from any plains they can just ride their horses across. So, with dwarves. Now, I don't, I don't know, those, those dwarves clearly don't exist. That's just a conspiracy meant to, uh detract attention from the uh from the fact that the earth simply isn't deep enough if you if you dug all the way down where they say those dwarves keep digging keep living then you'd clearly fall out the bottom of the world yes Jedediah is a flat earther <laughs> jesus <laughs> fucking god <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's gonna be one of those days. I made the Martin. worst fucking character possible. Your character is approached by a man who is complaining of bandits who are ransacking his farm. His livelihood is being tarnished by a bunch of weird freaks dressed up like some shitty gang. See? See? Weird freaks? This is this is straight out of the books from the end times. <laughs> end times. <laughs> Where do you get your information, goddammit? Also, a person who told us to kill those bandits Tell me everything you know in payment. Well, I'll we'll, we'll take that as payment. Okay, so... Listen, sirs. Um, I'm just a simple farmer, you know. I only have about two, three acres of things where I grow my crops for the winter and prep for everything like that. I pay my taxes. So why do you guys allow such freaky gangs that just sprout up out of nowhere in this peaceful society? I was just digging and plowing, and all of a sudden, some weirdos start burrowing out of the ground, and they start demanding money and food and crop, all about this hive or some shit like this. I left my brother to go deal with them, but he hasn't been back in two hours, and now I'm getting impatient, so... 
I'm coming to you guys. We just got here. You just got here? Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, boy, you did the right thing coming to me. Uh, take me to this place, and what was that you were saying about Baron Varman? Also, you want us to really murder them, right? Well, I want you guys to sort of deal with them, because right now they're proving to be a problem. God, they just look so weird with their stupid fucking costumes and whatever the fuck's on them. Costumes? Now, what are you saying about costumes are out there? They're, they're dressing up like ants or some shit. I don't know. It sounds like some freaky shit. All right. Uh, you lot is allowed to come along with me if you want to, but I gotta keep the peace, so... It's just like the book says. I'm coming along. Right, yeah, sure, okay. Maybe the so-called hive has some information. Yeah, uh, Race Mice is going to head out. He, uh, unbuckles the pouch on his belt where he keeps his wand. <laughs> oh, wizard love man. Acting like a tough dude, too. I love it. Anyway, I'm going to ignore the flat earther dwarf who's just denying this. <laughs> he's no, he, he's exist. a dwarf denier. He's a dwarf denier. Better. Oh my god, someone's like, either they're just furries or they're trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween is over. Oh. That session was already passed. We can't do it now. I Don't guess worry. we're just killing furries then. Next year on November 1st, we'll have the trick-or-treating session, and I'll do the whole thing in a Tommy Wiseau voice. Oh, God, no. <laughs> this is the improv it's session. It's going to be it Sean's revenge on us for this. This is the improv session, don't worry. And it's whose revenge? Because I inflicted this on myself. <laughs> it's like me being a flagellant. I can't no, blame you if I'm you're, bleeding. No, you doing a campaign entirely in a Tommy Wiseau voice is revenge on us for doing terrible accents this session. Oh, dear Christ. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, as, as, as they travel, um, Jedediah is holding up a, uh, book that he appears to be reading out of, although it's clear he's just kind of nodding and making humming noises and not even remotely understanding what's in the book. Mm-hmm. So, What's... in fact, corn does, in fact, pop and become a slightly misshapen form. None of this makes sense to him. Anyway, it's a book on animal husbandry. But moving on. He As occasionally arrive... quotes vaguely, like, vaguely religious mumbo-jumbo that doesn't coincide to any known religion. Dear God. Anyway. He's holding so, the book upside down. As you start to arrive... And reading the cover instead of the as pages. You, as you start to arrive at the farm, you realize that there are many shapes out there in the field working. It's like they're doing a... They're, they're making a bit of a working party thing as they're just constantly moving crates and boxes out of the farm and deeper into the field, and some of them are moving a separate line, dropping off what seem to be balls of something, about the size of a medicine ball, give or take. <coughs> Pardon. About the size of a medicine ball. And they're just sort of plopping it against the farmhouse. Like, they're treating it very gentle, but otherwise they're just moving it in. Yes, comrades. You know, you know, not overthrow the government. Everyone gets the same pay, pay, pay wage. As you guys start to sort of get sight of it, you realize that this is by no means humans. They are, in fact, strange and six limbed creatures with antennae. They don't have human faces whatsoever, and they have a tiny thorax on each of them. How, how many they... of them are there? As they work, they make a worker's song, but since they have no lips and they aren't humming whatsoever, it's just kind of a <laughs> over and over again into some weird alien format of music that you don't, you don't understand it. But it's super duper vibe, considering that today is a sunny, bright day, and this is kind of like the cicadas singing. 
And you said they were taking stuff and moving it to what now? They're taking stuff and moving it deeper into the field, hidden by rows and rows of corn, of which it has been getting read about by Jonah all this trip, with vague religious images. Jedediah, not Jonah. One or the other, I don't care. His name is Jane. He talks like this. <laughs> Moving on. My name's Jane Cobb. <laughs> this here Bo's name, name is Vera. <laughs> No, I'm not making the Firefly reference this time. (laughs) Moving on. But yeah, these things seem to be moving things out into the field and bringing back balls. It's boxes for balls. It makes no sense. This is not equal trade, according to what Jedediah has been mumbling about as he reads Animal Husband. Okay. I'm going to walk up to one of the balls and poke it with my sword. As you start to approach the balls, one of the strange insect creatures, which is about your height, mind you, turns to you, and he's like, He waves his hands frantically back and forth as though to dissuade you from approaching the ball. You cannot read his face because he has no eyebrows, nor forehead, or anything of that sort. This is an insect. However, he makes weird, slightly agitated sounds as you approach the balls. Jedi just, well, no, the farmer who brought you guys just kind of looks over and he's like, yeah, they don't really get too happy when you approach them. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, I'll stop and ask the thing why. Uh, that was its response. Yeah, good luck. This thing yeah, now we speak. we got ourselves a problem here because uh, God's to keep the peace, but they can't speak. I don't want to open fire on them. I mean, my your inner officers are kind. Of... Yeah, break their legs and send them to concentration camp. To the gulag with you. So race mice takes a he has um like a little religious symbol it looks like a little like a star or a sun uh, and he takes it off of his chest and holds it up and he says now uh, boys uh y- you can't keep messing around with this with this man's uh, business i got here uh my badge official and i'm arrest you if you don't come quietly and explain yourselves <laughs> His, his you are all under arrest. The sheriff badge. <laughs> <laughs> the, the weird creatures who look like ants continue to work as you notice that they start carrying like calves out of the barn. Oh, n- now you see that's that's a crime right there. That you the can't be taking what's not farmer, yours. The farmer boy just kind of like nods along as he puts dip in his lip. That's the human in his cow. Put it down. And they uh, continue the, watching. The creatures realize your agitation, and with you barking at it, they all kind of turn towards you, stopping work very briefly. Writing my weapons. Yeah, uh... I'm going put my to hands. Um, there's, oh. there's about two... Yeah, let's say two who have really formed up. There was the initial line starting from the barn. They hold calves, but are ready to drop them at any second. And the other group who are holding strange balls. They start to move in closely and defensively around these balls, while the ones who were carrying the boxes of, like, crop and... uh, crop and animal, they kind of put them down and take up a more offensive position. They've registered you as enemies at this point. Right, I'm going to stick my capybara on them. (laughs) Jesus fuck. (laughs) Okay, so let's just I never thought I'd get to say that that phrase. Looks like negotiations have failed. Well, diplomacy broke down. Oh. Let's see, uh, let's see, shit, it's not trained to fight monsters. 
That is amazing. It's trained to fight humans, but not monsters. You yeah. are fucked. <laughs> Your capybara, Costco, just kind of looks at you. Wasn't it Roxo? Like, what do you want? <laughs> and now it's Your Costco. Your capybara, Costco, yes, the store enterprise, he looks at you a bit confused. Fuck. Maybe it's just been a bad day for him. <laughs> He's doing his best, but Damn really, it. he can't handle oversized fucking ant things. Right, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot it then with my with my fucking bow. That is an attack plus dex, okay. correct? I mean, yes. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so there's going to be two groups: Group A and Group B. I need you guys to specify which you're attacking. Group A of the, uh... Which are the ones the that look stuff. like they're ready to fight us? That would be Group A for aggressive, while Group B is for bitches. Group A, then. Group A is aggressive, Group B is bitches. They're the ones who are kind of like, no, so, we don't want to fight right now. I'm going to shoot Group A, then, because they're threatening us. Yep. And, uh, unit, it is 2d6 plus your modifier. So that is... Also, quit trying to get them to seduce the bugs. They can do it, but I mean, like, don't... <laughs> that's an 11 to shoot the bugs. Okay, that's wonderful. How much damage? What are you rolling? What do you mean, what am I rolling? Oh, you have you have hit dice in this game. Oh, uh, right. I'm rolling a d8. One. Wonderful. As you shoot the bow, you strike them in the shoulder. Well, you strike one in the shoulder pad. He kind of seems unperturbed whatsoever. He stares back at you angrily and rips out the arrow. He throws it onto the ground. This will not aid his hive, and therefore it has no use. The group, in formation, begins marching over to you. They all do that singular stride of a dude getting ready to fucking brawl in the bar. Yeah, can I uh, quick draw my my wand off my pouch and do and fire off magic missiles? And the plus one for being cool at quick drawing. Okay, let me just find the die rollers. That's uh... insert. The only way that you can shoot bugs with love is using a process I'd rather not go into detail for. <laughs> okay, so that's a seven plus one, so it's an eight overall. <sighs> Miant Broler. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why did you roll two d four? Because that's the damage of a magic missile. I want to charge in and start okay. hacking with my sword. That's a bad idea. Oh, wait. So as you fire in that magic missile, it flows and it crackles and it hisses and it shoots out with a crack, similar to a gun. But clearly guns don't exist. You know? What's a gun? Anyway. But as you launch into that group, you actually do blow a couple of them away. Insect parts begin raining down in a small and disgusting, well, hailstorm. That's again too. I spin, spin continue. the wand that I blow the tip because it's uh, it's a little bit, you know, smoking. I want to get into a position where they have to attack me before they attack the other guys. They begin hurrying over towards you guys. They are preparing to fight. Okay, I'll. I'll stir hat. Right. Yeah. You can dive in and intercept them before they actually make contact with the full group. I'll so, do that then. As you dive in, you attack. Do your attack roll. Roll for your hitting. Alrighty, that's nice. Oh shit. 
Oh, Jesus Christ, Otter. <laughs> anyway. So. so Everyone is know, changing. Everyone is changing Jedediah's name every single time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Jeb? Moving on. <laughs> so. The next sign uh, you... of the apocalypse is that no one can remember anyone's name. Unit, because I forgot your character's name. There's a sign of the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> Gustav. <laughs> Gustav, as you dive into the fray with your blade ready, you start to rib them a fray, much like the humble rope under a fat kid's weight. You tear and you rip and you slice and you sether... You sether Thorax from carapace, limb from disgusting, creepy exoskeleton, and some even get their head removed, a la the best of barber in the world, a sword. Rip and tear. Yes, rip and tear, because you tear them apart until there's only two or three left to actually do some fighting. Unfortunately, these ones brought sticks and or some farming equipment that they totally weren't stealing, back with them it is now turn it is now time for group alpha to start acting alpha they try to attack i'd okay. just like to take a moment and say why the fuck are all my game are all of the game masters i know defaulting back to bugs recently i don't know frankly when i chose magenta i was just angry green was gonna be undead wait no Green was going to be like orcs or goblins, red was going to be like demons and shit, and like black was going to be the undead, and then you all were like dicks, so I was like, nah, fuck it, magenta, and so I spent the next ten minutes looking desperately for something to fit magenta. I didn't realize we were, we were I thought we were all supposed to pick different colors because it was going you to did. affect us. No, quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Dicks. So now you're fighting ants. Let's proceed. <laughs> um Group Alpha, well, what three remain currently begin attacking you guys. Who's in the front? Who is in the back? I am in the Group back. back. I'm definitely Who in the this front. back is Jedediah. Um Ulrich Ustav, there it is. Gustav, you're immediately descended upon by the strange bug creatures. They begin attacking you with small clubs, and some even using their teeth. Why am I saying a few bug teeth creatures? It's three. Uh, one strikes you low, the other two strike you high, using a combination of teeth for the lower part and upper part, and one hitting you with a rake. So I'm going to now roll. Damage. Uh, what? Okay. So, as they try hoarding you, it starts pinging off of your armor, frankly. Their teeth is not sharp enough to penetrate your steel just yet. Well, your scale just yet. It mostly just feels like an awkward tickle fight with a crab. But the one with the rake kind of hits you and it annoys the shit out of you. Well, let's restart. And now we're going to go back to Jedediah once again. You notice that the Bravo group has all squared away their things and they're preparing to move in, this time of an even greater size than before for Alpha group. Whatever they're doing, they've covered it in a strange film protecting these balls. Are those balls? You're not too sure. If any of you wants to do a roll regarding that, you totally can. Um, yeah. For the time let, being, Let me fight. see. Um... Religious commie doom guy. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so... Yeah, that would be a, a wisdom roll to learn something about the ant testicles, right? Yeah, pretty much. Alright, I'm gonna make the wisdom roll then. You eight learned plus... a little bit about the ant testicles within your animal husbandry. That's thing. nine. The animal husbandry book I can't read and act as and act like is a religious book. You just kind of make an assumption, and sometimes it's an assumption right, based on the freaky. pictures. 
Yeah, but you can recognize that these balls maintain a similar shape to another one that has a small ant drawing within it. These are eggs. Mm. Or at least, as you call them, eggs. They're eggs. Inside, they contain tiny ants, which is why you call them eggs, because it is an ant egg. Even though that these are called formians. But you know what? They're called ants to you, because they're ants. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these I'm pretty sure these bug things are here to wipe out the crops and help bring the apocalypse. They're just Mark. building up their forces to to overrun the fields and eat everything. Race for the first time, it does not sound like he's entirely insane. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be about right actually there, boy. Uh they're probably producing chemtrails as well. <laughs> what the fuck's a chemtrail? A chem I don't, you don't know. know what a chemtrail is, but it's you know bad. trails it's from their stuff. thorax along the ground, some kind of fluid. Kind of like constantly teabagging the dirt. You this assume. is just immediately turned devolving into the conspiracy theory session. Welcome to Pure Improv. Remember when it was Tommy Rizzo? I miss those days. Anyway, so, who wants to keep going? Who takes the next move in combat? I'm going to assume Jedediah, using all of his two brain cells, had to focus for that one. Yeah. So, Marcus. You two guys uh, kill the group B, I'll tear, uh, tear up the last ones. Actually, who has the lowest damage? Uh, mine's a D8. Um, so, um, about how close are these, uh, varmint? They're, so, the three who are still within the remainder of Group Alpha are currently surviving, surrounding Ostav, was it? it, it yeah. Yeah, they're surrounding Ostav. G Gustav. Whereas Group Bravo, <laughs> Gustav. He's doing it intentionally. Well, no, I'm not, and that's the sad thing. <laughs> Ain't nothing to do but uh go in there and get my hands dirty. So Gustav, Ustav, Gustav, Gustav, and uh, Group Bravo is currently huddled around that massive egg sack that they have now just firmly secured against that farmhouse for some reason. Group Sorry. Bravo is significantly larger thanks to the miracle of your magic missile out of them to fuck. Yeah, about that magic missile. That was the only spell that I have that does damage of the two spells I could prepare. So I take out oh, my no. dagger. Oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I've got this that right. What you good. like prepare two spells, I think it says in the prepare spell section. So it's just <laughs> two quotes. Sorry to derail this. Prepare new spells chosen from your spell book whose total levels don't exceed your own level plus one. So that's two. You get to prepare two level one spells. Well, anyway, wizards are supposed to be squishy and killable at first level. Well, it's a good thing because that's totally Marcus, what's going to happen. You might join a very exclusive group of player characters I've murdered. Hmm. So anyway, I take out a dagger and I'm getting I'm getting my hands dirty. I'm going to close in. Uh, what do I roll to make that attack? You roll plus strength. Do you want to deal with Group Alpha around Gustav, or do you want to try dealing with Group Bravo, which is the uh, I'm a clean-up Group Alpha, probably. How the you fuck do I roll? Move the ants surrounding Gustav and prepare with your dagger to do some good old-fashioned haircut routine. Haircuttery? There it is. Do I got enough yeah. time to lay in or not? Wait, what? Excuse me, do I got enough time to lay in with my dagger, or do I, do I just got enough time to move in? No, you have plenty of time to move in and actually get some work going. Alright, what do I, I mean, roll? D a d20? Three... Uh, it's 2d6 no. plus strength, I believe. It's 2d6 plus your strength modifier. Alright, that would be 2d6 plus absolutely nothing at all. Here we go. Oh shit, yeah, that's an 8. This will go well. That's an 8? Oh boy. 
That's okay. Yeah, uh, seven to nine, you deal your damage to the enemy, and the enemy makes an attack against you. Oh, super. So you better kill him first. If, he, if that counts. So as you move in to start stabbing at them, you realize that the one still has the rake. He hasn't latched on and is trying to chew through, you know, solid steel like a dumbass. Turns out these ants are not the brightest, but you know what? Whatever. So, how much damage do you do? <laughs> how much damage does a dagger do? Uh, you have a you have what? a damage die that is. Oh, one d four. Okay. <laughs> roll your one d four. Roll your roll your caltrip. We're we're going to ignore that this group has four oh. armor for a second. Beautiful one damage. Oh, one damage yeah. reduced by. Hey, it's an exoskeleton, and you feel like you've inadvertently healed him. <laughs> but I don't let us focus. I let don't. Us focus I feel like that's not how hand. armor works, Sean. It's not, and in fact, that's not what happens, but I'm going to just bullshit it as a joke. I'm not going to apply it. So okay, good. On. I was worried, because sometimes you're a sadistic son of a bitch. You're raised due to a necromatic spell imbued in the dagger you totally stole from Tiny Tim of all fucking people. Oh god, not Tiny Tim. <laughs> we don't talk about that man until you guys go into the shop. <laughs> that comes with time. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> you chip away at the ant carapace to no avail. He then responds in turn. God okay. damn! How much armor you got? Wow, that'd be zero. <laughs> zero, I'm pretty sure. He's, he just whacks you hard against the side of the head with that rake. Almost like he was like, dick. <laughs> You're really lucky he didn't get you with the spikes. No, but he hits you in the side of the head with the rake, and it's yeah, it kind of hurts. Sora breaks the rake too. It's not a very well made one, but you know what can you do? It's just a weird ant man who's fighting you using garden tools while the other two continue gnawing on your other friend, whose name I will still unfortunately forget. As we move on to his turn. 460, 40, 460 millimeter cannon. Question, okay, about so how much damage did that do? So 460 millimeter starts his attack. What do you do? I'll, I'll, I'll attack uh, group Rob. So with two of the ant men still drastically clinging on to him in order to try working as a hindrance, Take a minus one to your next roll. Okay. Wait, oh, oh shit. Roll 2d6 for your attack. Wait, do I still apply my... Plus your, it's 2d6 plus your strength modifier, but take a minus one to that. So that will be an eight. And what's he get with an eight? Uh, with an eight, it is. Wait, no, no, no. Um, I did uh, I did the normal roll, but instead of three, I did two. Oh, so he gets a nine. So what's he get with a? With a nine, he gets. Um, yeah. Uh, enemy still gets an attack against him. It's like monster of the week rolls. Ten plus he deals. Sandy. At ten plus he deals an extra one d or he has the op he deals normal damage, but he also has the option to add a d six and also take an attack from the enemy. If he feels like doing extra so, damage. So for this one, he's still mandated to get attacked back. Yes. So that's what's going to happen. So as you step in the club, like, what up, I've got a huge ant, you decide to swing on group Bravo. Roll your damage. I'll also try to get the... I'll also try to harm the two ants currently trying to... Eh. Alright. So swinging those ants off and making them assimilate into group Bravo, you wind up dealing seven damage to the total. Group Alpha has now been dispersed, fortunately. However, unfortunately, Group Bravo merely...
But your damage has done a fair bit as you saw through a few of them. Fortunately, using your mighty blade as the cleaver for which you cut this fine sack of meat. Uh, okay. Uh, they'll make their attack. Yep, the ants start skittering and almost hoard you all at once. They grab, they pull, they tear, and they bite. And they try to inflict some form of damage on this brave and noble warrior who decides to fuck with their cheerio. You had a good union going, but you had to go and mess it up with greed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your shield is negated because they're just all, like, hoarding onto you and grabbing on wherever they can to try getting a hold of you. They're using rush tactics, and it's working a little bit. You take one harm. The biting, the gnawing, and the tearing, it is, in fact, proving to be a bit much as they squeeze, grab, and pinch wherever they can. It's very uncomfortable and, frankly, weird. It's like a tickle fight with many crabs now. However, you know, the crabs are winning, it seems. But not by much. Okay, next up. Uh, I believe that'll be me again. Correct? It is. All right, I'm going to make another shot at... Uh, have both the groups converged into one at this point? Both converged into one at the cost of your buddy also being in the center of the fray. Right. I'm going to make another shot with my arrow. Let's try this one more time. Seven plus... That's... Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's six plus... Or seven plus... What was my mod again? Two. Six. So that's a nine. Uh, and... For ranged attacks... Uh, I have the choice of either having to move to get a shot and putting me in danger, getting a minus 1d6 on my damage, or taking an extra ammo. And I'm going to use up the extra ammo, so that's going to cost me two instead of one. Oh no, he spends another... Okay. As you and fire I off roll your five shield, for damage. Your arrows soaring throughout the sky, you actually manage to do well, you do a triple. <laughs> you actually do a triple, which looks pretty cool from everyone's perspective, as it mows through three of the ants' brains, killing them instantly. Thunk, thunk, thunk. It sticks the last one against the barn wall, actually piercing into one of the eggs. It looks Actually, rather silly now that you get a second to pause as two other bodies collapse to the ground. However, Damn. they continue resorting around your friend, Marcus, and or race. Do your... Respond accordingly and help them. Uh, do my what now? Okay, it's your turn. Okay, right. Um, yeah, and I say, damn, boy, that's some fancy shooting. And then I go ahead and try and stab one with my teeny tiny useless. Oh, just beautiful. And that's forward ahead. You cram your four damage against the carapace of a thing with four armor. And while you don't necessarily feel accomplished, you at least feel like you're helping as they start to knock off of your one buddy. You actually manage to free his shield arm and allow him to respond with his full strength now. Bring up a hand for, uh, Ulrich. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking writing it down now, okay? <laughs> <sighs> there's Jed, there's Race, and then there's Ulrich. Ulf? Oh, was it Ulrich or Ulfgar? Uh, it's what actually. Was it your na... <laughs> what was your name? <laughs> actually, his name is Ray. You almost got it. It's Ray. And his second name is Smice. Ray Smice. Okay. 
<laughs> I kept hearing race mice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fucking Christ. Fucking you see, you insult the son. I insult the father. Unit, what is your character's name before I just refer to you as the letter U? R Railway. Railway? Do you not even remember your character's own name at this point? <laughs> no, I'm deliberately like, like <laughs> It's actually Gustav. Gustav. Gustav, okay. There it is. Fucking Christ, I... Huh. I'm a good GM. I'm a good GM. <laughs> Moving on. Bravo group is crowding around Gustav, and they begin trying to, well, basically fuck him up. They start pulling upon you, Gustav, as your arm is free, and this gives you a moment to try acting before they attempt a very poorly made, like, quartering, you know? Alright. So you did a seven, and you've inflicted five. The group definitely starts skittering back as you've damaged them heavily. They begin crowding around the eggs in a hope of, you know, keeping you guys from causing further damage. But in an attempt to try doing it last and not least, a single one actually manages to grab a dagger of his own out. I know, unexpected. The ants know how to use weaponry. And he tries one final desperate effort at stabbing you in an effort of getting you away from the egg. And... Nope. It does one harm as it clinks against your dent, as it clinks against your armor and is completely averted. It doesn't even hit your shield. It just it's like the scene in Goblin Slayer, you know, the little shitty dagger slams into where your neck would be, but it's completely covered in plate and scale, resulting in nothing. Okay, I'm just gonna grab it on the neck and throw him on the ground. As your final bit of damage, you grab it by the neck and snap it instantly using your muscle. <laughs> Fucking rip. Then, you then quietly drop the ant without even acknowledging it being a living thing in the first place. As you stomp its head and walk <laughs> closer to the egg pile, the last two which survive staring on in horror. Kill them. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to agree. These are unlawful insects. We gotta purge them. Do they have? Do they have a license to be insects? The farm boy in the background says, "No, they don't." And he's just <laughs> quietly been watching it this whole time, like a voyeur of violence. I'm trying to put away my sword and be kill the last two with my fist, armored fist. Get ready, because that means I'm going to have fun with this one. The final two actually start pleading with you to stop and hold your assault. Their hands up in a defensive stance as they eggs. Almost like two innocent, <laughs> almost like two innocent creatures, despite having murderous intent seconds ago. <laughs> and, and behind the screens, I put the the first two execution, that's why I do them. Doom glory kills. Jesus Christ, roll it. Do I have to roll for hits or just damage? Uh, roll for damage. <laughs> Fucking god, <laughs> one and eat the other one. <laughs> Fucking Christ, what is. We're able to hit everything. We just can't do any damage. You start trying to fuck with the creature, and as you do so, it tries biting back. At this point, they aren't even fighting for the sake of fighting. They're fighting to defend themselves. Now, boy, you should have taken that one into custody. Give it a lawful sentence. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my Jesus. As you Jesus. try grabbing it and fucking with its head, it actually manages to get that lucky bite in right around your helmet. 
It pierces into your neck and draws deep blood. Oh my god. Well, fuck. Yes. His, his neck is strongly bleeding, but it's nothing too fatal so long as he can get proper covering. It's just ripped up the skin pretty badly. No damage to actual veins or arteries just yet, but it was a close call, as he essentially pinched the head. He has you locked there, locked, in a desperate grab, and you know for a fact that if you try to struggle, it could possibly do further damage to your neck, which could re result in bleeding. I'm going to rip, reach for my sword and try to cut it in half, like, without moving the rest of my body. Roll dex. Okay. Uh, that's 12. Jedediah, you just kind of stare on in bliss. And, uh... Yeah, I mean... Racy Smice. <laughs> and Ray... Oh, that that's not a good roll. That's a very bad roll. Uh, can I try and shoot it off of him? Yes. Thank God, it's a dice roll. Oh no! Fuck! That's and a what five. About you, Ray? Oh, I suppose I'll go in there and try and sort it out. No, no. Gotta be peaceful here. And I, I come I, in and I try I to these, separate the two. I think I think that these dice codes are fucking cursed. So, will you allow me to have handcuffs? Oh, no, no, no. See, I'm only acting out of pure redundancy. In fact, as you go to approach, you get shot with an arrow. Oh. <laughs> you get shot with an arrow. Roll damage. Uh, roll damage, Jed. Roll damage. How? Yeah, roll damage. This will be going against One. The Oh, God. <laughs> All right. So the the one ant for Bravo group begins trying to dig in deeper with its teeth. While the other grabs your sword and actually wrestles it from your grip, it is now armed with your blade. Gustav, I'm now going to roll damage for the one gripping your neck. Oh god, I regret the decision. <laughs> I'm also I regret going everything. to plus 1d4 of damage. Oh my god. You take another 6 damage. Okay, uh, so how As much- teeth dig deeper in. How much- You are now bleeding. How much damage is that in total? 6. Okay. I detracted the initial two based on your armor. And, uh, dear god. You're now bleeding, and I'm now going to roll 1d6 to determine- Nah, no, 1d4 to determine the rounds in which you maintain your blood loss of four damage. So for the next two rounds of combat, you will be bleeding at four damage each. I've just noticed that everyone in the Twitch chat for me has the same colored name. Oh, it's different for me, and they keep asking you to fuck with ants. I'm not gonna fuck the ant. None of us are gonna fuck the ants. Are you not gonna make the ant eat its friend, then? <laughs> I should have taken the charm spell just so I could, you know... Wait, fulfill that request. I, I have. I am the law, and I can. <laughs> I'm sorry, Judge Dread. You have. I am the law, and not me. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> what does I am the law do? When you give an NPC an order based on your twine authority roll plus charisma on a plus seven, they choose what they do. What they you say, back late cautiously, then attack. On a plus 10, mm -hmm. you can also make, take a plus one forward against the autonomous, they do as they please, and take minus forward against them. Alrighty, 
However, there's going to be one condition as you desperately try to plead with the ant who literally has you in a death grip. You're going to take a minus one to this roll. Nah, a minus two. Because not only is it crushing your trachea between its weird pincher things and trying to finish you off, but you're also kind of dealing with severe blood loss. So, 1d6 minus 3. No, no, you roll 2d6 for your skill rolls. So it's 2d6 minus 2. Or is your skill a minus 3? Or a minus 1 as well? My, my base modifier is minus 1, so yeah. <sighs> minus 3. Out. Crit, crit or nothing? Crit or nothing. Oh, yeah, oh shit. Gotta roll at least... The total has to be at least 7 to succeed this. Fuck. The ant has resigned itself to finishing you off. <laughs> we are if it kills doing one wonderfully. Human, if it kills a human, it's done everything it could to aid the hide. And if it can kill the other two in pretty quick succession, it will carry all of your corpses back single-handedly. May I and attempt with a total to... party kill. My attempt to plunge my time. dagger. <laughs> well, you also have... So, now we're going to do the combat formation in accordance with the ants are now in charge. So it will go the ants, Jed, Ray, and then... You have an ant armed with a broadsword, and an <laughs> ant armed with your friend's throat in its jaw. <laughs> Oh that god. That was surprisingly doing even better. <laughs> you fucked with their eggs and they are now pissed. The one with the decides to charge Jed, deciding, hey, kill the archer. The one with the friend's throat in its mouth decides, I'm gonna continue doing that. Oh god. So is it the ant's turn? Oh or? Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm, I rolled for the one with the jaw, and it just got five. So take three harm. Add another four for your bleeding. So you get you get seven harm. <laughs> Christ. The one with the sword now tries to charge. It's trying to charge um, me. Yeah, it's trying to charge you. you Quick, Costco, help me. Okay, do the fucking roll. Uh, Have let's Kathy see, Barra what is it? It is... He is trained to guard me. So, Ooh. let's see. Uh, let's see. No, my ant brothers, you do not know what you are doing. I, too, am an ant. <laughs> uh, let's see. He has one armor, and I can either choose to add, I can either, okay, I can either have him take damage for me, or add... I'm, I'm just going to add his armor to my armor, so I have two armor instead of one. What move are you doing? Uh, Command. Okay, so you're having your capybara basically jump to take the blow. Even jump to help deflect the blow. You. It's just, um... Yeah. It will yeah. jump in between, and as the ant charges going full speed, it will carry the capybara, who will take the brunt of the force, but the sheer force of it impacting you will be the rest of the damage. I'm taking damage from oh, my duh, own goddamn animal companion. Why did you add spikes onto the armor? Why? <laughs> It looks cool, but it's so impractical it in a situation prevent... like this. It prevents the raiders from stealing my capybara. What raiders? The ones that are gonna attack me in the end times. Someone provide a recap for B3 Top 1. No, no, in the chat, someone type that. Out I'm just so it can I'm stay sorry. There. Anyway, I'm sorry, Beta Pi. There is no context. Even the context no, is not proper context. 
There was all right. A lot of I would uh, I'd type something, but mm. I have a mechanical keyboard, and it would fucking drown out everyone else. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Someone give him a recap. Yeah, uh, someone. Uh, some, uh, there, of course, Twitch chat's recap is we didn't fuck a bug when we could, and now we're gonna die. <laughs> the recap is four people have made very bad life decisions and have ended up all in the same game together. I'm about that to commit a TPK. Recap, Marcus. <laughs> I'm about to commit an accidental TPK for an improvised session. Moving on. What are we rolling? I want to refer. So, so your capybara is jumping in the way to resort to taking two harm from this away. So that will be functioning as your armor. So now I just roll the bugman's attack. Yes. I'm adding two to this attack on the sole basis that it's now using a broadsword instead of its teeth. Oh god. It does three damage, which means that as it impacts your capybara, which lets out a wow of pain. Oh god. <laughs> How did I make that Costco, noise? no! But as it lets out a wow of pain and <laughs> slams the blade against the spiked armor, the capybara continues you so remain fairly that's okay, one damage, correct? You know? That's that's one extra nipple piercing to your many, but you're all right. <sighs> yeah, it's just one damage carried on into you. Okay, and it's it's my turn now. It is now your turn. Okay. Mara has impacted um, you. Right, I'm going to try and shoot the ant off of my friend again. Wait, is he still alive or did it kill him? Unit, what is your health looking at? How much damage has there in total because uh, my total health is 25. You should probably keep, be keeping track of that one. Right, I'm gonna I try and it shoot it. Me. Fuck. Oh, uh, that's a on. six. Let's, so... Let's, let's... Hold on, we need to recap so we know what unit is standing at in terms of health. I... Look at all of my damage rolls that immediately follow unit stuff. Okay, so that's one. It's a three. One plus four... Plus... Two plus four. So one plus five plus. Okay. We're t we're terrible at math. We are. Damn it. We really are. I am not aware, Capybara yet, Beta Pi. <laughs> okay, so I'm counting it off now. So that's <laughs> oh, God, one. much like his prices, Costco is slashed. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you have the angry otter to thank for that. Uh. <sighs> okay. So I think I just did the math. And... What you're standing at is 18 damage. Oh shit. You're currently no. at 7 health. Yeah, you're at 7 health. Why is he taking so much damage in such a. Bleed got stacked on and I rolled a max. Oh Christ. I only did it for two turns, so he stopped bleeding as severely, or at least he's done so much damage that it's become completely irrelevant. Last time he took damage, he took seven damage, so he could well just die next round. Or this Very round. well. He was also bleeding from severe open neck wounds and having something's teeth in his neck. Which, by the way, you guys have not fixed yet. Yeah, At the problem rate. is, I only have a healing potion. If I shove that down his neck, it'll just go flying out of his giant neck hole. <laughs> <hole. laughs> I'll use, uh, I'll use land hands on myself. But it just poured out with the blood. What do I do? And I fucking missed again, 
because apparently it's I like can't that hit scene anymore. In Pulp Fiction. It's like the scene in Pulp Fiction. You're gonna have to stab it directly into his heart. Yeah. I, I can use land hands for myself. But yeah, I, I fucking missed again, so uh That's wonderful. Wait, so actually would it um... with this next arrow, how do you react? Wait, you had a question? No, never mind. Good night, Angry Otter. Right, and my anyway. damage is five. Fucking great. You do now I'm rolling high when it hurts my friend. Okay. Uh, Ray, you get five damage as the arrow rips into you. <laughs> oh my god. Uh... Don't worry, don't worry. It did not miss your bones whatsoever. It, in fact, completely nailed it. So it wasn't even like a clean through shot. No, it got lodged in your left shoulder blade. I haven't actually taken any damage from the monsters. I've taken... I'm on 14 health from 20 purely from Cloak shooting me over and over again. Yeah. Well, no. One was from the monster getting pissed and attacking you. The oh. other was from you getting shot. Beta, I fucking love that oof image. <laughs> anyway. So, now that we've got Jet out of the way, it's your turn, Ray. Try to save this situation as you've just been plunged into a world of agony. Oh, me? Yep. It's your turn. Hmm. Uh, I have a question. Judging by this knife and what it's done so far, do I think this that that you know I'm rolling one d four? Do I think I'm even capable of hurting these insects with this damn thing? Realistically, you kind of you realistically could have realized that when it bounced off of it the second time. But yeah, I think you've kind of quietly come to that assumption and has injured you. <laughs> It snapped you out of your hands. If I keep stabbing it, it'll help. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, you did help out your buddy earlier by just distracting the insect in a similar way as they were distracting him, because force is still force. It's just you aren't delivering any injury or critical. So I have a lot of healing potions. I have like four of them. Do you think there's a way I could shove it down anybody's throat? Given the current circumstance, like there's people just open flailing. neck hole, there's an open neck hole you can just pop the cork off and try stabbing it in. I mean, you gotta... <laughs> well, that it's sounds just thing. about perfect. Oh I'm no, a... this is I'm some a... backwoods medicine here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna come up What's to the term? That part. Tracheectomy or uh, tracheotomy? Sean, new merch idea. <laughs> Shoving a shoving a health potion down the hole in someone's neck with the tagline "Backwoods Medicine." Okay, now hear me out. You know how water coolers have that ten-gallon jug of water? Oh God. Now imagine your buddy gets decapitated, and you just shove one of those where the neck hole is. Does oh the body God. remain alive? As long as the brain is in that jar. No. Well, I, you know, run up to Neck. Hey, you got someone who said they'd buy it anyway. And I'm like, uh, now this is how we did it back in my home country. This is how Mama would sell the Neck. You're asking me to kill my animal companion. I've refused to hurt Costco. The ants will eat the capybara. Then all, then we'll only be left with Walmart the rat. Ray, if you are going to try doing some backwoods medicine in which you pretty much just Hail Mary and brought a bottle into a person's throat for hopes of healing going on, I need you to roll Wisdom, which should hopefully be your high stat, but if not, this will be a very unfortunate turn of events. Well, it is my high- well, it's not my high stat, but it's like 10 plus 1 is 11, so Enemy. I'm like- this is how we used to do it back at home. My mama used to sew my neck wounds all the time, and I just start shoving the bottle neck into his neck. <laughs> so shoving it past the ant pincer, you actually manage to get it into his throat, in which that healing goodness is going on. None of it actually gets mouth, because unfortunately it does not eat using its pincers alone. 
but your body whose neck wounds are quietly being sealed by the healing magic appreciates it, if only for the fact that it stops his severe bleeding. Unfortunately, the teeth is still there. <laughs> oh, now don't be a baby, boy. You, well, you can deal with this. Thank Who's you, comrade. And I'm going, to, I'm going to try to crush his throat. To crush his throat. Or... You're going to try decapitating it with your bare hands. Yeah, that's the only plan I have. Go ahead, roll it. That would be 2d6 plus your strength. Okay. Ooh. Holy fuck. Okay, so I have a question. Do you want this to be able to hurt you, or do you actually want a death grip already? I, I, I just want to get out. I, I, just without right. the least amount of damage. Roll your damage, but take away two. Okay. The healing potion, as a matter of fact, did get on the end. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He just doesn't do anything, but he manages to actually wrestle the ant's jaws away. You're currently holding pinchers, but unfortunately, that is a very bad place to hold anything that has pinchers. For context, people, we keep rolling reasonably high on all of our stat rolls and getting consistent ones on damage rolls. This is okay. fucking amazing. I can count several ones. As the one who has attacked the capybara and its owner now spins around with the fucking broadsword still gripped in its ant hand, <laughs> it begins charging back towards Gustav, letting out a war cry of an ant warrior. Though it's not quite the warrior it would hope to be. <laughs> it tries to dramatically stab Gustav with his own sword. And... But fortunately, is in fact far enough away that it cannot close. The other ant begins trying to wrestle you and getting you into a position in which it could in fact hurt you. Okay, I have a plan. Gustav, I need you to roll strength. You're going to try to outmuscle an ant. Well, thank God, it's a dice code error. Try it again. No, just put a hashtag instead of anyway. Alrighty, so you rolled a nine. I'm going to present you the opportunity to either gain an experience point or be perfectly square. What's perfectly square? If perfectly square means you're going to be hit by this hit, which may or may not do damage to you, that is what I mean. Okay. So... If you get the experience, I'll give you, fuck it, let's say two experience, because you're dealing with two ants. Just to be generous, you'll get two experience, and in exchange, you will be with the ant at full force without the aid of your shield, while still maintaining the grip on the pinchers of one. However, if you decide to be square, you will let go of the pinchers of the other ant, and you will try to attack using your shield as a counter. You want to actually do damage three for your armor instead. I actually want to do something else. I want to try to move the ant, like, I don't know, throwing it or yanking it towards the other one so I don't get hit and said the ant gets hit. Give you an extra plus one, but the ant will now function as your thing. It's going to be just like the Costco thing. The ant will also be receiving the damage, though. Oh, so both of us get damage? Yeah, you will both receive the same amount of damage, and I assure you that I will be generous and let this kill the ant. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah I'll do that. 
Uh, any rolls? I'm gonna be doing it. Okie doke. So, as the blade slams through the ant that you have dramatically shifted in position, the blade in fact comes directly through the back of its skull, partially impaling you in the chest. Your armor has done much to stop your own sword from killing you, however it's not done as much as you would hope. You take two damage, however, you're at least okay. Your bleeding has stopped, the healing potion has started to seep deeper into your various wounds, and, well, this ant has nearly murdered you with your own blade, and it's a miracle you're still alive, even though you're fucked up beyond belief. You have five health. You're at 20%. Did, did the sword is lodged within the other ant, which was struggling with you for a time being, and it releases the blade and begins backing up. Okay. Uh. Shit. Okay, I'll be the tank you guys just can Hopefully. Alrighty. So uh okay, let's see whose turn it is. Ayo Jed. Capybara got attacked by some ant which proceeded to spin around and attack some guy. You need to exert your revenge and or deal with your capybara. Um. Hmm. I feel like I need to stay in the fight. My capybara didn't take any damage. Because we're both armored. And the capybara... It was your armor. No, I have I have one armor on my own. The capybara also has one armor, and um, one of the abilities of command is um, add its armor to my armor in any situation. All right. Um. So I'm going to try and get. <laughs> um, I'm gonna switch to my spear because I feel like I'm wasting ammo at this point. And now, is one of the ants still attacking my cappy? Or well, no. It spun around and tried to assault the armored man using his own blade. Okay, I'm it going. It really I'm its going to try and. There is now only one. Oh, there's only with one ant with his back to you. Oh. Oh, uh, I'm actually going to, um, no, I am in fact going to use my bow instead, and I'm calling my shot as a, uh, um, I'm, calling it as a headshot. Actually no, I'm calling okay. it I'm calling it as an arm shot. Oh thank God, because I was about to be like, I hope he fucks this up. <laughs> anyway. I have the called shot mm -hmm. ability. Fuck! I miss. Okay. Yeah, no, fuck you. <laughs> no, you don't just miss. You shoot right past this creature. And you in fact nail your buddy in the arm. Again? Yeah, roll your damage. Fuck, eight. Oh my god. Wow. How? Why? No. <laughs> oh, no. This is oh, not allowed no. to happen. Unit, great news. <laughs> Unit, you get <laughs> shot down. However... Fortunately for you, you now get to do a death saving throw, which is something I've never done in this system, by the way. So allow me to pull it up. Oh my fucking god. This is to a great point. <laughs> fucking Christ. He does have the chance to roll dex to avoid it. Yeah. Try to roll dex.
Because one of the moves is defy danger. Okay. Um, <sighs> never mind. He, oh. Well, he so doesn't, he doesn't that. defy danger. Now <sighs> the ant carcass kind of got in the way of him seeing that. Dear God, how is this off to the start that it is? You killed, like what? There were like 14, 15 ants. You brought it down to two in like an instant, only for these two to proceed to fuck you guys' shit up horribly. <laughs> oh my god. Who would have thought that an ant grabbing a broadsword could create so many problems? Oh, and by the way, Ray, as you see the arrow fly by, you quietly think to yourself, maybe Jedediah does not deserve to shoot arrows. <laughs> hey, he's hit it, like, twice. He just did no damage. Okay. Um, Gustav. As the arrow impacts your skin, you do not feel the pain of it. Heal is the sudden sensation of you dropping, almost in an instant, to the ground. But you're still standing. It's like someone just took away the ground like two or three inches and you just immediately fell down. You are no longer standing in that farmer's field, bleeding or covered in the various wounds that you have acquired. You, in fact, are standing in a field of bones. Infinite bones of various creatures and beings and monsters, even exoskeletons of the very ants you had slain are piled here. And as you stand here, staring off into what seems to be infinite blackness and calcium, you see the bones crackle and cradle and form up into some sort of humanoid mass. A single skeleton forms within it, your very own, and it stares at you. Greetings, I am death. Like it's a I'm pleasure going. to make your acquaintance. He reaches out a bony hand of the exact same shape and size of your own. The blood god is not going to like that. Don't touch his hand! I need you to... Let's see. What do you roll for this one? Wisdom? Yeah, no, you just roll nothing for this one. Yeah, it says just roll plus nothing. Yeah, death doesn't care how tough or cool you are. <laughs> oh my god, was that your roll? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> oh, first player death. <laughs> death quietly shakes your hand. And he looks at you and he says, Well, it would not be beneficial for me to just snatch you now. So, I don't know. I think I'll give you... I'll decide in a few seconds. <laughs> I'll get back to you with my answer, but, you know, you're on the list, buddy. And uh, there's no take backs. It's here. But for fun, it's going to be an aneurysm, so don't worry. It'll be painless. Uh... I mean, when I send you back, there's going to be a lot of pain, but that's unrelated. Okay. Alrighty. I figure you may as well help them out a little bit very ignorantly before I just snatch you. It might be in your sleep, it might be in the middle of a meal. Hell, it might be like the moment I send you back. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Okay, okay sir. And just like that, you feel as though you've snapped back into the situation. Oh my fucking god, your arm is in agony as that single ant now stares, almost bewildered, as it reaches for the blade to rip out of the carapace of its dead friend and try murdering the one who shot at it. There, um... It grips the handle and begins pulling dramatically as you feel your blood seeping out of your countless wounds. You're not sure how long you have, and based on that skeleton, you probably don't got much. Okay, I'm gonna lay on hands myself. <laughs> That's gonna matter. <laughs> You're back with one HP, by the way. Oh, shit. It grips the blade and rips it from the carapace of its friend. Ray, it's now your turn. 
All right, well, so uh, what we got going on here, there's uh, the, the guy with the broadsword. Is he still running around that? Well, that ant is currently ripping the broadsword out of the other dead ant who is currently in the arms of your friend who has essentially visited death itself. Fuck that. You've had your fun with that damn thing. And I'm going to run in and try and grab his, like, hand and try and wrestle the sword away from him. Oh God, the wizard is Something... trying to wrestle. <laughs> Something about the idea of a wizard that's a sheriff who just says, fuck that, you've had your fun. Ah. <laughs> uh... Roll strength. You're gonna try wrestling. Oh right damn! Here. Oh fuck. Plus nothing, but nice. still has eleven. Our fucking <sighs> luck might you maybe ripped, change. I you hope. Ripped the broadsword from the carapace of the ant as the other one stares bewildered, having been caught off guard. He completely ignored you because your dagger did nothing to them earlier. And now here it is, you holding the, preparing the strike. Do you decide to finish off your foe, or do you, you know, do literally anything else? Oh no, anything else sounds like a bad choice. Uh, <laughs> this one ant slay the party and become the hero of ants, their great leader. <laughs> next, next session, we, you are all ants preparing. I say to continue the war against the surface worlders. You are all ants, and your task is to prepare the parade as you march through the square of the surface world, greeting this great noble hero who has slain an entire village. <laughs> by the power invested in me by the law, I give myself the right to use lethal force, and I oh, the power uh, invested attack. me as the GM. I give you plus one experience. <laughs> okay. So do I roll to hit, or is is he gonna have his turn first, or what? Uh, you've wrestled the blow. We can just chalk that up as your hit. Roll damage plus two. Okay, what is the damage of a sword? Well, you're weak, so I'm just going to be adding two onto this roll for hopes that you don't roll a four. I mean, what's the damage dice of the sword? Uh, your, actually? your damage die oh, no, is it's, four. It's, it's oh damage. my! Oh, I forgot. It's my damage die. Okay, right. Cool. So 1d4 plus 2. Plus so two, so two plus 2, 4. As you swing this mighty sword down, it goes clink against the carapace of this creature. You just did not have the force for it. It's kind of disoriented the beast, but otherwise you did nothing. The God great, damn! It, the great person slayer continues to march. Gustav, you see the wizard holding your blade. You see the ant slightly disoriented. You see the motherfucker who shot you. And you feel <laughs> nothing but pain. <laughs> that you're gonna die. Like, rather quick. What are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, fucking shit. I'm, good. I'm yeah. gonna chug my health potion. You decide to start chugging. Roll. Fuck it. Roll plus your constitution. Uh, what's the dice? What's your score for it? Uh, uh what do you mean? Uh, oh, what's the... your score for your constitution? My constitution's 15, so I think plus... It's a plus one. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. 16 and 17 is plus two. 2d6 plus 2d6 plus 1. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, and how much does a health potion heal, Marcus? I have no idea. They're listed in my inventory, but they don't. It doesn't list what the actual healing value. It's wonderful. It, it is, is, isn't it? Wonderful. The next session, the sheriff went with a group of people to fight ant people and went missing. Meanwhile, the ants have started using... <laughs> oh, it's the innkeeper's you... rap problem all over again. Oh, oh when no. Your fucking, when your fucking picnic gets... <laughs> oh, unfortunate. Oh, God. But, yeah. So... Congrats, you're up to nine health. It will not matter when you die. 
You bring yourself away from the feeling of death. <laughs> the sheriff's head problem. <laughs> Such a deceptive title, but you know. <laughs> oh my god. It's now the ant's turn again. This ant, deciding that maybe human weapons are not as good as good old-fashioned pinchers, now lunges at Marcus. Ray, you have the ant lunge at you. Pinchers ready. Roll defy danger. And that's 2d6, is it? Yeah. Let me check what the actual thing would be. Yeah, do I get a plus on that? Or what? How do you choose... Hmm. How do I choose to get out of danger, did you say? Yeah, technically speaking, you can use any of your stats to do this. Alright, I'm going to... Fuck. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to just try and uh, try and dodge out the way. Move me, get out the way. Did you roll? I did, I got a six. And if it's with dex, I think that's plus one. So that's a seven. Okay, seven. Alrighty. So... You stumble, hesitate, or flinch. So... Let's say you flinch. And uh, as you flinch, I'm going to give you the choice. Do you want your friend Gustav... Actually, let's make it better. Do you want the capybara to try intercepting and stopping this attack from going on with you? Or would you rather embrace this pain? I will embrace the pain. Okay. You get five damage as this ant, taking a note from its friend, latches around your neck and begins biting. <laughs> Okie doke. So let's move on. Jed, you just noticed that this fucking ant is almost going to commit a single handed TPK. What I'm going to do? try stabbing it with my spear, because clearly I can't Thank trust God. myself with a bow. Can you trust yourself with a spear? Let's find out. Ten! Great. Or no, nine, not ten. My, uh, I got my mod mixed up. Uh, but nine, well, yeah. Wonderful, you deal nine. So, uh, so my, and my damage roll is seven. Oh, thank God. Nice. So as you lunge with your spear, you in fact impale this creature, finally, finally fucking killing it. <laughs> oh my god. Why did you give us creatures with four armor as our first <laughs> you, enemy? The real question is, how did you kill so many of them so quick, only for these last two to be the problem? Oh, I have wait. no idea. I I have no idea what <laughs> that picture is. But I, I just I just want to acknowledge Beta Pi. The next session, the ant's human problem. <laughs> <laughs> Assign its eyes and mouth to this sort of positive deadpan of the DM. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, the background for this has been art drawn by Sean in MS Paint with a mouse. Oh Jesus Christ. I mean, it's pretty good for that. Uh, this is some of his yeah. worst art. It's not bad, it's just not as good as I've seen Sean draw in MS Paint with a mouse. That is actually surprisingly detailed chicken leg it's eating. I thought it was melting ice cream. No, you dick. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Why would a lizard man eat ice cream? God. I don't know, Ray Sean. I don't know how your brain works. I'm just glad I almost killed you all with an <laughs> problem. Damn I'm it, glad you that it was an almost instead of an actual kill you all. Regardless, there's a whole fuckload of eggs that are gathered against the shack and secured using some strange, you know, sinewy paste. 
Like, do we have movies. any way to light them on fire? You're not sure fire would work, but good old fashioned bashing it before they get ripe is probably good. All right. I give Gustav do his you, sword do back. Do you want us to roll for this, or do we just nah, bash them? man, you can spend all day doing it if you cool. want. There's only one problem. And that's a fact that if you take all day with it, I can't continue fucking with you guys. <laughs> oh. hey, crush, crush them all. Take, yeah, no let's, longer let's just fucking take. bash these eggs. We do not want more of these. Not after this. You guys begin making a hard day of work, pounding away at these eggs, not acknowledging uh, what may be out in that field, as you hear a quiet rumble. While I they're wonder, doing that, I'm wonder, going to go things, upstairs. These things came from underground, didn't they? Yeah, it's clearly that, defined. That means that they right. built their own bunker. I just have to take it over. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we can turn it into our keep or whatever. Race mice goes I'm upstairs you in? and relaxes while they go ahead and smash all the eggs. He needs to rest an hour so he can prepare more spells because I think da the dagger was not really doing it. Yeah, yeah I think it is probably a good idea for us oh, to rest. Before he does that, he uses Talk With Dead on an ant. Preferably the one that was a huge problem to us. Oh no. <laughs> a corpse converses with you briefly. It will answer any three questions you pose to it. To the best of the knowledge it had in life and the knowledge it gained in death, does it speak? Can I actually problem. understand? Problem. It, it was a hive you... mind and didn't know anything on its own. You communicate with the soul of this dead ant who has experienced individualism for the first time ever in its life shortly before its death. <laughs> howdy there, partner. Now I got some questions well, for you. Howdy there, partner. That's you. That's what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's Two the best. Two people with terrible fake southern accents and one who's actually from Texas. <laughs> oh, so, uh, <laughs> what I was meaning to ask condescendingly, despite having no facial expression. Now, son, uh, I want to ask you how many of you little varmints be scuttling around down there in the dog? Fuck, do you actually want me to give you a number? I can't count, so this is gonna be a problem. <laughs> right, ya. Many is a very good assumption. I would assume well over this many. You notice that he doesn't hold up hands because he does not have them. Right. Uh, let me see uh, what other questions. And I say to the others, you got any questions for this little bug? You got something for me? I Either have you... questions. Uh, yeah, what be that? Why did you guys stop us? Uh, cause you was stealing things from lawful citizens of our land. No, we weren't. We're and the unions. But you was running around stealing cattle and stuff from our barn. No, we were taking food. Fuck is a cattle. Yeah, you was taking our food. So, that's our food now, if we take it. Uh, so actually it isn't, because you was dead. And um, now it's our yeah. stuff. <laughs> sure, sure. That'll be your stuff. We'll see when the queen tries to get it back. That is my second question. Uh, how about we go about killing the queen? Well, to my knowledge, the queen can only die if there's no one to help her, and so we help her. Because if she dies, that will be bad for us. I think. Maybe. I mean, that's what she is all... Wonderful. Um... Uh... I've got a third question. My final question is, uh, do y'all have any kind of weakness? I mean... Hey, this is an, this is an ant experiencing individualism, right? Yeah. What do you call a, uh, what do you call an insect that doesn't believe in its, in its usual, uh, in the, in the nominal belief system? A heretic. Ticks are arachnids. Hey. <laughs> uh. You get his point.
Technically, they're not insects, they're arachnids. You dumb fuck. <laughs> Entirely uh, different species. You know, at the request of the chat, I ask the insect, how does it feel to die like a bitch? I don't know. Why don't you ask your friend? <laughs> he looks pretty fine to me. I you actually say that just as the aneurysm kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> He looks pretty fine to me, and then you notice him drop like a fucking brick. Question: shit. Are I'm you just like on my way, bro. Shinder, just dead for now. A second, for a second, you feel like the ant has actually psychically murdered your friend. <laughs> no, qu you question: really Have you actually triggered the aneurysm, or is this for comedic effect? Oh no, this is for comedic effect, and me actually killing him now. <laughs> Oh, well, we're down one party member. Damn, this ant be so strong, he killed one of us after he was dead. He was so powerful that from death itself, he brought more death. Before he disappears, I'm like, alright, I take him back. You you was a fucking badass. Let's hit my hat to him. He died a hero. An ant He's hero, silent. but still a hero. Yeah. He silently ascends to the equivalent of Ant Valhalla, where the lands are all food and the queen is always full. It's great. God, they get to experience individualism in the afterlife. It's this predestination bullshit. He was destined to kill many of you, despite being the weakest member of his species in terms of, like, status. <laughs> Yeah, they are in fact stronger from here. <laughs> Dear God, <laughs> you poor bastards. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about you, but now they're Gustav and dead. I think we should go get some backup. I'll load up my six shooters, I'll get some more ammunition. We'll come back okay. stronger than ever. It's been a little under two hours, which is record time to kill a player character. So I think we should go for a little bit more so that you guys can actually get a feel of the hive. This is all fucking... Dear Christ. Uh, so let's take a little bit of a tea time, let's say 10-15 minutes, re-explain what in the fuck we're doing and just yeah. get the general gist of what's going on. Yeah. I'll say that half eight in the morning is a good time for dinner for me. Uh, it's yeah. a good time to relax, <laughs> sort some stuff out. Ah, uh, 3.25 in the morning. Ah, uh, good old Lovely. fashion, 1228 at night. No, nah, nah, Beta Pi, Gustav's just fucking dead. No, <laughs> Gustav goes to the regular afterlife in which he died like a bitch. No, he... <laughs> he did oh, take actually. down more of them than either... than the rest of us. He goes yeah. to the eternal battlegrounds of the Skull God. Gustav, you also go to Ant Valhalla. There was a misfile. <laughs> you went to Ant... Yeah, you went to Ant Valhalla. There you are. No, you went to Ant Valhalla as the thing they're eating that is constantly regenerating in eternal torture. What I'm yes. picturing actually is Ant's running around having a great time, and he's like that one awkward person at the party where they're not sure why they're there and they're not having any fun, but they're watching other people have fun. That's what I'm picturing. He like just, just makes it all the worse for them. It's like the whitest kids you know sketch where the guy goes to like animal heaven. No, no, no. It's like, like the whitest kids you know sketch. Me. The no ants. Me. The ants. They're taking me to the mall. Anyway. <laughs> there are so many good whitest kids you know sketches. Unit. Pick a different class. Make that your new character. Make them, like, super quick, because you already know how to make them, so logically you can make all of them now. Okay, make I'll go with fighter. And then we'll go through. I'll be right back. Zoom. I also link being... them. Go ahead. It, it's, it's just up in, uh, it's just up in gaming general. Okay. Uh. Shit, where is Just... It? Submit to me the information via chat, because I'm gonna go grab a drink real quick and just marvel at the fact that you got murdered as fuck. <laughs> anyway, so to reiterate the entire point of all of this for the chat, just so that they get to know what's going on. Um... So... 
in or no, the it's not. The it's not in channel. gaming general. I thought I tossed it in behind the it's screen. It's in behind the screen, but I deleted it. Uh, why did you delete it? Most fitting the behind the screen stuff. It, it, it you kind of cut out there, but I mean, yeah. like, we kind of I still mean, need it. Like, I didn't know that a person would die. I and it's also on topic. If it's if it's on topic, you don't need to delete something. I have an of moderation. However, you still made me an admin of all things. I did. Regardless. And I yeah. generally don't regret that. That's good. What about General Grant, you fuckboy? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry, you mean <laughs> President, worships an ant god. Mean President Grant. <laughs> oh my god. No, I mean the Honorable Mr. Grant. God. Oh god. But Somehow anyway. or another, I wound up on a page of Airsoft World War II guns. I already don't remember how. But regardless. And the biggest thing is, and the biggest thing I'm I'm noticing is that there's there's no Swomi PP or PP something I can't remember the name PP38 I think. PPS uh, PPS. No, P not PPSH. That's the Ru that's the Russian copy of the Swomi. The Swomi was a Finnish submachine gun. That's it's like a PPSH except with actual machining tolerances. That don't make it a fucking nightmare. But yeah. To re-explain to the chat just really quick so everyone can get on the same page. Uh, in the behind the screen chat, I was chatting with a few other GMs. We were just bitching about a lot of stuff, frankly speaking. And we came to... We came to a standstill in the conversation in which someone finally produced a question which was like, Is improv good? Is improv an important skill for game mastering? And I was just like, well, you know what? Yeah, I would say so. So I decided to give my two cents. Uh, Mr. Compassionate, or Marcus, decided to give his two cents on the matter. And I made a little bet in my head that was like, you know, GMing is important. And it's especially important if you, like, form... You can do an entire session completely improvised, so long as you make notes. And I decided to give them one... Post it in the behind the screen chat like, Yo, y'all motherfuckers got one hour. I need three to four GMs, specifically Game Masters, to hop in on this shit. We're gonna run it. So I got my three, and that was from Cloak, Mr. Compassionate, and Unit 4545. And 30 minutes, I basically was like, yo, we're doing Dungeon World, and we'll just go through it. I looked at no other notes, gave them three colors to pick from to determine the enemy. They chose all three colors separately without knowing why they were picking it, which is my fault, too. So Fuck out it, of Mr. spite, he gave us fucking ants. Out of spite, I gave them ants whose stats I didn't even look at. Until I actually did, and I was like, well, that's not bad, that's not too bad, and they mowed through a fair majority of them, only for two to wind up becoming complete badass. It's, it's like the, the, um, it's, it's like, what is it, group. uh, it's like the ninja rules, they're competent in reverse proportion to how many of them there are. Exactly, you start with 88 ants, and you mow it down to the one that has the chain blade, and that one fucks shit up. But yeah, so hey, I've improvised this entire session. They've started out with characters who have only had about 30 minutes of prep time, all things considered. Maybe a little bit more if they really got ahead of themselves for ideas on who to, like, run. But unfortunately for them, a uh, major shitload of problems for everyone involved. And I think that this is going great because we have had plenty of character humor, plenty of laughs at the absurdity of the situation in which I basically reverse ninja them, in which they brought fewer and fewer ants, but only problems. And I just love it. 
<laughs> and who killed one of the party in the most badass way possible. <laughs> I'm dead, but I'm gonna will the death of my enemy post mortem. <laughs> He's just like going for a sip, and then he just cl clap. <laughs> How does it feel to die like a bitch? I don't know. Ask your teammate. But he's... Oh. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> that's... That's hard. <laughs> oh, that yeah, it's like 3.30 in the morning, though. Um, that ant has become a minor deity. And there is a theater near me that is playing the original Die Hard on the big screen. And this isn't, like, a local theater. This is, like, a theater chain that's just decided, fuck it, we're playing Die Hard. So, I'm probably but gonna Jesus get myself Christ. into, like... So, uh, as it currently looks, the session has basically been, hey, there's a little problem going on for us. And then, like, they go to check it out only for the ants to fucking slaughter them. Yep. Do we even get an hour's rest before the rest of the ants show up and kill us? That's the real question. <laughs> Probably not. Because <laughs> if I can it. get an hour's rest, I can prepare two magic missile spells, which will make my character twice as effective. Grey Fox. The reason the reason they're playing Christmas movies now is because clearly it, it it's the it's the whole thing about how Christmas just keeps getting pulled up further. So of course they're playing the best Christmas movie early. God, I love Die Hard. It's such a good movie. Like I okay, I, I legitimately so... don't know why because it's not like this is like a yearly thing or anything. They just randomly on, went. No, nah, fuck it. We're playing this. Die Hard. <sighs> They're playing Die Hard in honor of the ants who died hard. <laughs> Actually, uh, when was? Oh, it's the thirtieth anniversary of Die Hard. Oh. Uh... I mean, it's not, like, the 30th anniversary in days, because then they would have played it on July 15th, but it is 30 years of Die Hard. Oh, no, apparently this is just, like, apparently this is, there's a bunch of news articles that were released fucking yesterday saying it's coming back to theaters for its 30th anniversary. Okay. Okay, so unit, you have three plus ones. <laughs> I love how even the new Hendrick. looking for a fucking stupid fucking autoplay ads. Uh, even the fucking news is referring to it as the best, as widely considered to be the best Christmas action movie ever. <sighs> Sorry, continue. But yeah, I, I uh, gave the scores for you, Unit, and uh, what class will you be now? Fighter. You will be the addition that's been invited from the city guard, who will hopefully provide anything to help. He'll hopefully be more competent. What? Wait, what was he before if he wasn't a fighter? A paladin. paladin. Oh. <laughs> You find the only thing that was holy was his neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh fuck. I'm I'm a little worried that I'm going to start falling asleep soon. Wait, uh, DM you the shit? Or should I just put it behind the screen? And just drop it in, uh... Just drop it in the TMU thing, I guess. Wait, Sean, I just realized something. Die Hard's back in theaters. Yeah. Who's in Die Hard? Which which famous Alan actor Rickman. who we Alan accidentally Rickman. Yes.
Alan gets to see his namesake on the big screen. I'm afraid Gustav won't be joining us for the rest of his life. <laughs> well, of course he joined. Of course he's joining us for the rest of his life because there is no more of his life. He yeah, that line always joining you for the rest of his life. Oh. Yeah, Beta I, Pi, I, it is three here. Three. The reason I the reason I kind of need sleep is because I had work last night and. There's a movie that I'm going to see with my dad tonight. And I've also got homework to do. Not much, but I have some. I'm just currently working on a drawing to replace the one we currently... <laughs> Is it going to be Gustav fucking dying? Not quite, but you know, let's all have hope. I, I actually kind of want to see that. I want it to be that one ant, uh, and it's the same pose as Fist of out... the North Star. You are already dead. We're going to put out like a fucking edited down version of this that's just the highlights with Sean's art as the backgrounds. Or not, because that would require actual work on my part, but... One can hope. Oh, sure, no, I wouldn't have to make the art. Just, just dig up all. Of... See, I'd mess around in Movie Maker and do it for you, but uh, I don't know if I can be trusted. Nah. Nah. It's, it's probably not worth doing. <laughs> okay. I'm just doing coloring, and then I'm gonna send it in. Okay. This is a fucking speed draw on your part. Oh, Beta, uh, no, I've... Uh, Beta, you say I don't have the right to be tired until I get so little sleep I hallucinate. Um, Sean, do you remember Awakeathon? <laughs> <sighs> I've talked about this a few times. Sean here had... The brilliant idea one summer, uh, the summer after freshman year, to do a wake-a-thon, which we had at the time intended to be a yearly thing and potentially try making a charity contest thing out of it. We never did, and that is a good thing, because it was horrible. It was literally just, hey, let's see how long we can all stay awake. And we were all in early high school, so this was when that still sounded like a great idea, because staying up late was cool. So, I tied for first at, what was it, four and a half days? No, not at all. You'd be fucking dead, buddy. No, it was at 29 hours. It No, it was not 29 hours. I have the... I, 
I'm going to Facebook because I still have the fucking Awakathon group there. Um, it was it was multiple days. That's the wrong group. Uh, fuck! Did I leave that group? I hope I didn't, because I want that fucking. Awakeathon bullshit. No, that is. I hate Facebook. It's just so fucking terribly made. I click groups and it sends me to my page. Because that's what groups means. Again, Awakeathon 2014. There it is. <sighs> okay, I finished my tea time message. Okay, we start. Well, I finished my tea time thing. I am now going to drop it in gaming. Damn it, some of the posts were deleted because they were by people who left the... Uh, let's see, that first post is on July 1st. Zach, I demand that you make this the new little screen back. Hold on. Live as the worker, die for the queen, become a legend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, is the fighter an ant? Um. <laughs> oh my god. If we all get party wiped, I think we should do like an ant run through. Yes, but uh, when I'm when I'm actually more awake. Yeah, absolutely. Like on another day, that's when we all do the ant party. Yeah, the old Take the old pant for it is. Where you all start out as three separate groups of ants who progressively die until you're just three ants. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, as those three ants, you become infinitely more powerful. So in twenty minutes, Sean drew this. Oh Not bad, Stalker. Not bad whatsoever. <laughs> <sighs> Can at least run those some of those lines straight. That's I could have, pretty... but that would require me giving a fuck. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I know that even if it wasn't for Awakeathon, I know that at one point I did stay awake for four days because I remember distinctly at the end of that getting up to go to bed, managing to stumble my way through the dining room towards the stairs, and then standing at the bottom of the stairs, staring at them, and then calling back to my parents, uh, which way is up? <laughs> don't stay up more than 24 hours, kids. Please don't. I've done it. I, reg I thought it was cool at the time, and I regret it so hard. It's probably I why I have, have memory it. problems now. Career? Because it causes actual brain damage, and I, I, I think it's safe to attribute my memory problems to that. Okay. So, we are now resuming our session. You guys have grabbed an overnight stay as your friend now gets buried alongside the several eggs you've had to collapse and about eh, 15 ant corpses. So 15 ant corpses of varying size. In the morning, or uh, as, as they uh, finish piling the dirt on, the ants dig up from the under underside and take his coffin to eat his body. Allow the GM to do this, but yes, that is in fact what happens. 
Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ulrich or Olsen or whatever your name was. You were ru- Rust and Piss. <laughs> God damn <it. laughs> Yeah, Rust and Piss. That's all I have to say. No, I said Rust and Piss. <laughs> Rust and... But... Uh, and sure. Yes. So, no, so we should have had... I... We David should have had him remake his paladin as Gustav, son of Gustav. So Beta Pi recommends using the ant corpses. Oh armor. God, Beta Pi actually has. A, yeah, their exoskeletons have a higher armor class than than us. I'll allow you to try refashioning this ant corpse into armor if you would desire. Oh, uh, what's the role, dude? Because I'm gonna do that. Do you spend all night doing that? Yes. Instead of recovering, I get a good well, night's sleep. Hey, hey! I only took a couple of. I only took one damage. That's great. So you keep your regular health, and uh. Yeah, restock uh, on restock on ammo, and then try to turn these guys into armor. For myself and there's... for and for uh, Costco. Okay, now hold on. Um... So, after an entire day of rest, or in this case, more of an overnight rest, uh, you recover all of your health, uh, Ray. So what you're cool. brought right back to max. Right. What should I, what should I roll for, uh, for fashioning uh, the corpses into armor? What would you like to use as you roll? Um, I would like to use dex, because it is my highest mod. Alrighty. So... Unfortunately, that is in fact not what you would logically use. Uh, I could use wisdom. I'll give you the choice between int or wisdom. Uh, wisdom is my better is my better mod. All right, what is it? That's a plus one, and uh, I rolled a six. Roly poly oly, you fucked up the armor terribly. Well, I've got more corpses. I can try again later. You spend all night working and working and working. Also, you close the tab. I'm reopening it. I heard the click as I saw Cloak and Dagger left. <laughs> and I, just started... I was like, wait, shit, I need that tab. So, so wait, we spent the first 15 minutes with everyone silent. We've experienced my first, like, live on screen <laughs> player kill. And now we're just kind of sitting here realizing that the ants will probably succeed by the end of this day. <laughs> the ants are just better than us. They just are. <laughs> you haven't even fought a strong one. Now, nah, boy, oh, I'll have you off. know. We fought the grunts and the grunts almost murdered us. Oh, this God. time, uh, I've sure. pre- prepared two sets of uh, magic missiles. I missile. propose we abandon this fucking town to the ants and try and just try and get as far away as we can. Contact Dear the God. feudal USSR. Now you see, I would do that, but I have myself a, a duty to the law. And this time, I'm bringing extra ordnance, and I, I pull out uh, a second, I've got another pouch on the other side now, and I pull out the two wands, and they each have a little ring on them, and I spin them. I've never felt a tension like this before. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh my god. But we do need a partner. We better find ourselves another partner, because the two of us, we is going to be mincemeat down there. I propose we make a... I propose we leg it, because clearly this is the start of the end times, and we need to be as... F- and I intend to live through them. Strangely enough, I'm not entirely sure that he's wrong. <laughs> Je- Jedediah slowly gaining credibility. Maybe the Earth is flat. I mean, has anyone has anyone Earth. circumnavigated this fantasy world? I mean, that's a very strong question to ask, and I don't want to make you all do an intelligence check. <laughs> it on turns that, out so somehow Jedediah it. has just been right about everything. Could be. 
Uh, I'm sorry, the D&D map is flat when I have it on a table, so logically this must mean the world is flat in D&D. Dwarves are a myth. The world is flat. Anyway, you guys are super duper fucked. So, what do you spend this night and into the day doing as you try to desperately avoid your inevitable ant-like demise? Well, I'm I'm going to try and convince people to fucking leg it, because this is not going to work. You know what? Did it dial? You move into the actual town square and begin trying to convince people to evacuate. Some noble workers, in fact, decide to back you up as like a sort of form of, you know, no, we're not gonna leave, but we're gonna fight. I'm sorry, but Beta Full just charisma. shared the best fucking image in the memes chat on the server, and I need to share that. Because it's fucking great. It is wow. so... I'm waiting to see it load. Oh no. <laughs> it is. It is that. I'm. I don't know so, if it's loaded. I, I, yeah, it is fucking. <sighs> if you roll high on Chris, Ray will follow. And if not, he's staying to keep up the good fight. Yeah. So, do your charisma roll. You get plus one because you have a human corpse to back up your theory. Me? Yeah, because you murdered him. <laughs> Fuck, I rolled a three. That's wonderful. These people are not listening to some crazy coot. They're here to protect their homeland. Uh... Ray, you know for a fact that Jedediah is just Wait, a bit of Wait, this is parlay. Room. I can add... I can add... Oh, no. Um... I can add Costco's <laughs> cunning. So instead, I get a... No, I don't get a bonus to intelligence because I, I don't get a bonus to intelligence, but... Uh, that's a plus two, so it's a five, so it's not... It, it's still a failure. It's still a no, total fucking charisma. failure. This is charisma. Oh, it's charisma. It's still a fucking yeah. failure. Thank God. So, as you try to establish your foothold in a society where you wish, or at least had originally hoped to intend to live the rest of your days during end times, uh, unfortunately, no one's buying it. In fact, you do the opposite effect. You, in fact, raise some workers who decide to stand with you using some some equipment that they've gotten from small time as a neighborhood watch. I failed so hard, I succeeded. You failed so hard, you actually got reinforcements. However, they are not strong versus the countless ants that will soon be consuming them. Well, I, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna stand with them. Correction, right? not the countless ants, the like three ants which survive out of 445, but they're still super duper tough now. <laughs> Ray logic. walks up to the civilians and he's like, you're right to stand together against this thread. That man don't know what he is talking about. He's a crazy old coot. Now what we need to do is y'all gonna get your weapons and we're gonna make a stand against these varmints. Eating all crops. You gather a few men here and there to aid you, armed with axes and spears. I'm going to just tell you outright their scores. It's 3 HP, 1 armor, and a D6 for attack. What, our helpers? Oh, what, was the, um, what was the attack, sorry? Their, their attacks will be D6. Scott, wow, they're way better at melee than I am. Yeah, but they only have three HP and one armor, which means that realistically one well placed to bite will decapitate them. Oh sure. How many of them did you say we got? I'll keep track of them. Um who's the one who did the okay, what's your charisma score? My charisma uh, score is eleven. My modifier is okay. zero. Roll a D eleven. A D11, okay. And I believe, do I get a plus to this? Because of, um, um because of 
uh, Costco. Marcus, can you roll to aid? I probably can. Yeah, do a... Do a generic, like, 2d6 roll, Marcus, and that will determine, like, the aid that you provide for this roll that he will make. Okay, so That'll I be might get aid from him. Do I get Wonderful. a bonus from he Costco? fucked it up horribly. Sean, do I get a bonus because of Costco? Uh, let's see what the chat says. Should he get a bonus based on the capybara? <laughs> In the meantime, <laughs> ants wore each other's corpses as armor. <laughs> God damn. So in the meantime, um, so Marcus, you rolled a six. You in fact provided no encouragement. Wait, what's his bonus to that? Nothing. He has no charisma the bonus. The original thing is roll plus bond, but since I start you guys off so improvised, there's in fact no bonds. <laughs> Wait, uh, do these townspeople count as recruitlings or whatever it is? They're currently being counted as recruits. Okay. You could presumably be one of the many who have decided to pitch in, and I'll add you as a random plus one to whatever role. Oh no, Beta Pi! Please don't don't hurt Costco. Okay, something will happen to Costco. <laughs> Happy Bar inspires him through his presence. Okay, right. so the general rule of thumb is basically like, yeah, go through with it. Let's... So a D12, we get seven recruits. Uh, you get... Yeah, seven seems fine. And you get one more in the form of our new fighter. Provide your introduction, replacing Gustav. Uh, shit. Oh, yeah, it's... What uh... is your name? Shit, like... <laughs> I see. It's book, boot, cook em. Boot, cook em. Boot. Yes. Bukake? <laughs> no. Yes. That's what. That's what he's gonna wind up getting called. But still. Okay, boot, cook em. You are a member of the uh, Human Alliance to fight off. I'm actually halfling. You are a member of the alliance to fight the ant. Okay. Unfortunately, all of you are so racially insensitive, you just continue to call these people ants, even though that's not the term. <laughs> Great. Racists. I kind of feel like this is a this is probably a decent spot to leave off. Yeah, this could probably be a very good stopping point. So just so that I can like improvise how fucked you are next. So <laughs> how long has this stream been going? This stream has been going for two and a half hours. I think that's a good enough improvised session to show everyone that sometimes improv can in fact make a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's this a very good skill to have and actually like fun. Unless you're Gustav. It's actually incredibly fun because frankly speaking, you don't need the best you don't need to prep super duper a lot. Plus one damage for racial and sensitivity, great. But <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to do a whole bunch of prepping in advance in order to prepare a session that will essentially be shitting with friends. Tabletop should be about having fun with your buddies, and improv is a very good way to have fun at a cheap, quick, and easy way when you just have, like, a free hour or two. Like, this has been two and a half hours, and that's with 20-minute tea break of me and who has murdered a person through psychic will alone and <laughs> and yeah so I think it's been pretty much established that if you do in fact just have a GM who goes balls to the wall you can run a pretty entertaining game yeah in, in my head this is how I see the, the answer is like 
look, death, there's this total bitch, and he needs to die. <laughs> He's just a fucking bitch. Make him die like a bitch. Death was oh, hey, it's this guy who I've already scapegoat. determined is gonna die like a bitch. Cool. It's literally just like, yeah, I promised to kill with an aneurysm, and the ant's like, wait, 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 watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fuck with him, death. I'm, I'm gonna scare them so much. <laughs> if this uh, turns, this somehow turns into like a full blown campaign. I want a session know. two. I don't know when it'll be, but I would definitely like a session two. And I then, hope like, you all know full well that this will essentially just mean that. Okay, here's how it's gonna go. This is just gonna go until we all die in the hive. No, I'm going to drop random within the next 24 to 48 hours. And that means that everyone will have 60 minutes to prepare your character and what you're going to be doing this session. And you will be fighting a fuckload of ants and de hopefully destroying the hive. I'm not going to do any prep in terms of the hive. Sean, so that I'd be more inclined to be okay with that if I didn't have school and work all week. Oh, I know. Well, tomorrow's Sunday. Yeah, and I'm gonna be... I have schoolwork that I need to get done, and also I'm going to a movie with my dad. Yeah, also, today so is Sunday going to be for like, me. Yeah, today Wait, is already Sunday. Sunday. It is Sunday. four in the morning. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you have Monday off? Because I do. No. No. I don't... The only day off I... The only days off I get are around Thanksgiving. Which is not for not until next week. Alrighty. Well, I'll presumably have. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pick a random afternoon and or evening during this entire week. Mm. Uh, evenings are better for me. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So the evenings will probably just be the afternoons for me, which means that sometime around noon, give or take, in the next forty-eight to ninety-six hours, I'll be dropping the thing. All right. You know, if you if you provide me just a general idea of when it's going, because we have all established right now, the GM is going to do zero the session for once, mm. and thus. Like Marcus, this is this is fucking crazy. But the GM's basically walking in here like, "Yo, man, I ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> Let's do this." <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. But uh, it it is funny. It's like it'll be a random time. At that time, I could be either a asleep, b already DMing a session, c and a bunch of people already here, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm yeah. concerned, let's, but hopefully not... I'll be awake and available at the one time that you just so happen to declare the, the apocalypse, <laughs> the antipocalypse again. A, a general uh, time for me is in Central Time, Central American Time, is 4.30 p.m. to 10. Oh, I have one request. Can you tell me which chat you'll be posting the announcement in? So I, I at least can keep I, an I eye on assume it. behind the screen. It's actually right. going to be in gaming general now. Okay, that's fair. Because it's it's more in line with the thing, and behind the screen, it'll just be a random call for GMs. Like, nah, man. Yeah. yeah. So in gaming general, presumably, well, I know that it's going to be definitely when you're available, Zach. That will be the primary thing. Everyone else will. I mean, you all have parts which are essentially so movable, but that I can just ignore you guys or pretend that you're working from a different point in the story at this point. Yep. Because, frankly, player value is zero due to the fact that this is a completely improvised session with no intent to make it a series beyond let's kill an anthill. <laughs> All right, then. Well, we will definitely stream the rest. Uh, I will try and remember to, put the, to archive this over to YouTube within the next couple of days. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go get some sleep. See you guys. Alrighty. Good night. In the middle of the great uh, ant war, there was a lich that rose. He had a champion that could defeat anything. But sooner or later, the champion killed the lich. Turns out it's this fucking game that killed Gustav.
Yeah, we 